Hi guys, welcome to Helen and Chris's YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe and hit that notification button. Um, what I'm going to discuss with you today is what was that again, Helen? Sorry. Is yes. how I went out without how I went out yeah, with, how I, with no fear. Yeah, how I go out with um, without no fear. Now I'm going to put it straight now because the reason why. I used to go out fearful is I always used to in this time of the year and summertime used to wrap myself up in that trigger warning because you can see my scars, can you? No. Yeah. Right. I used to always cover them up and I got taught us I got taught a severe lesson. Yeah, you know what's coming in it. Someone said to me wisely, they said Every cut there tells a story. Yeah, everyone says a story, and it was Helen that said that. And Helen also said to me, she said, "Don't be ashamed of it." And that was when we were friends. Now I still, I was then still ashamed of it, wasn't I? And I still had bandages on my arms and. You knew I had done it, but but the first thing that Helen and I said when we were friends was that Helen asked me, she said, promise this to me, she said, that you would try to stop self-harming. And I said, well, I will try. And I said, I promise I'll try. And she said the, the thing that was always never told to me before was try to stop it. Promise to try to stop it, not to stop it. I mean, my pet ex-parents, I say that on camera because that's what they are to me, is that they said stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And when you're a child or when you're a teenager and you get told to stop something, you do the exact opposite. But Helen actually said try, and it, it sort of, when you're in that zone, you think to yourself, well, oh, Hang on, I was told to promise. I promised to try not to do it, and it got it slowed down, and it slowed down now to the extent for four years I've done nothing. Nearly five. Nearly five. So I'm right proud of myself. But Helen has said that in well in the last five years I have not gone out in the summer with long clothes on, long sleeve clothes, have I? Because. I've not been ashamed of myself for what I've done. People stare, yeah, people don't. But when people stare at me, I don't say anything, or I, I don't think ashamed of, I don't feel ashamed of myself. I think of, I think this, I think I have someone at home who is my fiance, who really loves me for who I am, who doesn't judge me, and who is devoted to me and I'm devoted to her as well. And he doesn't care about my scars. And, you know, and I think to myself, well, look, I don't need anybody else to, in my life to, it doesn't matter to me what anyone says because it's irrelevant. Do you see what I mean? It's irrelevant, it means nothing. If someone is gonna stare at me, it's irrelevant. I, I don't care about irrelevant people and out there that are going to sit there and stare and go, oh, look at him, he's scarred and all that. What's that. If people come up to me and they say, how did you get the scars? I will say honestly to them, yes, I used to self-harm. And if they just stare at you, they're going to get something right back. I'm going to say to them, why? Are you staring at me? Stop it. Yeah, don't be diamond. Mm -hmm. And the thing is with that now is that you now I'm not ashamed anymore. Because two reasons. One is because Helen has said you know, try to stop it, I have. That's the second reason that I have done it, I've stopped. So and I'm really proud of myself myself because I've done it for me for me I've done it for me and I'm happy 
Mm. It just proves how happy I am. Mm. But it does. So you're not, you're not fearful of going out now? No, I'm not. Not at all. The only, the only time I feel, feel when I'm going out is a little bit of anxiety when I um, go out on public transport and that, obviously, because people would stare at my arms and you don't know what they're thinking. Do you? No. So, you know, you just have to bear with it. But I think to myself, I don't care because I have Helen at home. So I'm plan happy. I'm really proud of myself that I've managed to stop. But anyone who self-harms, anyone who have got scars on their arms, or anywhere else on their body, you must never feel ashamed of, of yourself. But you must always promise yourself this. You must promise yourself you, you're going to try. You can't say to yourself, I promise uh, mum and dad I'm going to stop. You say to your mum and dad, or, or whoever you are, or to whoever you are with, you say, I promise I'm going to try to stop. If you say the word try, that's putting no pressure on you at all. Mm. And that's what you did to me, Helen, you put no pressure on me. You made me promise not to put pressure on myself. And I'll be honest with you, it didn't work, did it, for a long while? For about six years. It didn't work for six years. But you persevered with it. I persevered with it and I tried really hard and here we are now. Mm. Much better, in a much better place, happier place for it and I'm really proud of myself so it can be done. Mm. It takes a very long time. I mean, come on man, I was 47 when I stopped. You have any other fears of when you go out? What my other fears when I go out that I, what, that I conquer? It's really when I go at the supermarket because when I, I used to rush bound. I used to whiz around there and do the shopping, uh, well, two weeks of worth of, sh worth of shopping in what, two, 20 minutes? And now I just take my time, I stroll around and take my time. Mm -hmm. And that's it, that's all I do. I just stroll around, take my time, and that's it. If there's any pressure, I just try to take it off me by, you know, speaking nicely to people and just trying to stay away really, go at quiet times and beat it that way. So you still avoid like... Imposters, <laughs> we call them, don't we? But I don't like crowds of people obviously because I don't like people being closing in on me or touching me or anything like that. I don't like it at all. But it's not like that in the supermarket. If you go slow and careful and you know where you're going you, and you know, you've got it in your head that you want this, you want that, and you need this and you need that. You know what you're doing and where you're going. So you, all you need to do is try and calm your body self. You, you, you need to calm your body down a bit. Mm. You know, it takes so long to do that. It takes 20, 30 years to do it if you're in your 20s. Mm. Seriously. No, it does. I haven't. I haven't self-harmed. You're not self-harmed for nearly 10 years. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's not kidding. There's been what, probably more than that. Could be. I haven't been sectioned. Well, no, you, just be, years. This is, this is what I want to say to people for a start as well. Just because you self-harm does not mean these days that you're going to be sectioned. No. I'll say this, the only time that people are going to get sectioned is if you're a danger to either yourself or the public. That means if you're a danger to the public, then you're likely to get sectioned. Mm. That's what I'm gonna say. Just because you self-harm does not mean you're gonna get sectioned. I have gone into see my doctors, the psychiatrist, the bandages round my arms, both my arms. He says, have you been self-harming? I said, yes. He says, can you show me? And I open up, take my coat off and I show him he said, are they deep? I said, yes. And he would say, right, okay then, well, you know, we'll let it go, but tried not to do it. And then the next session, did the same thing. But not once have I been sectioned for it. 
No. Not once. So they don't sex you for that kind of thing. Don't get don't get that concept wrong. You no. only the only time you're gonna do that is if you're a danger to the public. Mm. So that means if you're gonna go out and think about doing things to public people, then or any person to the public, then yeah, you're likely to go in the loo to me. As they call it. As they call it. Yeah. But just because people have scars and they have burns or they have anything like that you know because some people they burn themselves and some people they um i don't know they 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 or even if they look funny mm. you know people always the general what i call the general public they always have this impression that if somebody's got mental health that they all must be locked up there, must all be sectioned there, must always be in these mental mental asylums. Mm, we're a danger. No, no, we're a danger, yeah, we're all a danger, just because I've got all these, um, all of these scars, they must think, God, he's a dangerous man. No. And not then, <laughs> off, I, off I go to the loop, I, I should be in, in the mental health um, wards in, in a local hospital. Don't, no, no, don't. You shouldn't be a member of society because you're no, such a exactly, danger. No, because I'm, they, they, they personally, the public, I'm glad. To be honest with you, <laughs> this, is the, this is the honest truth. Sometimes I'm glad people will stand up and move away. Because then that means that the imposter that's sitting next to you has moved away to another seat. And I think, well, thank you very much, now I can move. Mm. So I think, bye-bye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're not dangerous. Just because you've got no, mental just, health no. doesn't mean to say you're dangerous. No. Anyone can land up with mental health. Even the, even the people judging if, yeah, can even land the up with mental sit, health. Even the person sitting next to you, yeah. they, they can have mental health. You never day. know what no, someone no. has gone through and you never know why someone has mental health. No. No, you don't. And, and that's can, a fact. Can, can, and can you, actually, uh, can you actually see someone actually know that they've got mental health can you actually see somebody who's got depression no. or can you see somebody who's got like anything wrong with them whatsoever mentally because they're well, just people know yeah but your scarring could be something completely different yeah but that they're just like they're just like normal people that are feeling a bit low in the morning because they've got to go to work that doesn't necessarily mean that they're that they're a danger to the public, does it? It just means that they're depressed, but do they belong in, in a mental hospital just because they're depressed? They might not even, they, they might look like Joe Bloggs, a general, normal public person, and it could be sitting next to somebody who's got a knife in their pocket. Exactly, you just don't you know. You don't know. So if you don't know, don't judge. Exactly. And on that note, that's where I'm going to leave it on that one. Bye for now.